Hello guys and welcome to my tutorial video for the game They Are Billions. Now there's a lot of things to consider when dealing with this real-time strategy game which is available on early access on Steam. Um, and I want to take you through the basics just so that you can get up to speed. It, by no means is it going to be an advanced video because simply you need to learn by trial and error. But let me show you what you need to do. So first things first, go to options. Um, if you're not deafened by the music, then just put the music down. And graphics, set it to however you like. One thing I recommend is setting it to WASD controls. Uh, by standard, it uses movement arrows to move around the map. I prefer WASD because I'm just used to that um, in the, like when I play shooter games or whatever, I'm used to my hands being laid out that way. Now, we are gonna start on the basic of basic settings. So let's start a new game. We're gonna call it uh, Tutorial, okay? Now, initially, you only have the Dark Moorland available at the start of the game. Um, I set it to easy, 150 days. Now, what this means, this game duration, is how long you need to survive. Now, you might think, but doesn't that make the game boring or does it make it harder having to survive a longer period of time? Not really. The way it works is, is that just before the end of your game duration, you get set upon by hordes and hordes and hordes of zombies from every angle. So in easy mode, you effectively have 150 days to prepare for the biggest invasion. Okay, and then infected population. This is how much infected are there generally around the map at any one time. So again, I'm going to put on the easiest because this is a tutorial beginner guide. So let's start game. So I had a lot of fun streaming this game today, but I wanted to share what I learned because I figured it would be useful for you guys. Now, first things first, what you can do, you can pause time immediately by uh, pressing space, uh, space pauses and unpause the time, or you can click that play button and you can do it there. And you need to consider your surroundings. So the goal of the game is, is to keep this um, command center alive. As long as that's alive, then you're winning basically but the problem is when the zombies come to infect the base if they take over a house they take over a tent or whatever then the occupants inside themselves turn into zombies so you can it can butterfly effect you can go from two zombies to like 400 in like in a matter of seconds so you have to be very careful all you'll start with in this map is the command center which generates for you um is see it generates 200 money it gives you 10 workers it gives you 20 food supply 30 electricity and um there's 10 uh, power radius within here and so on so first things you need to do or first thing you need to consider you need to look at your resources and the buttons so what i can see here for example this power button is saying i've got 30 power available to me so that you see the 30 available that's how much I can build. But as you build more bases and more structures, you will need more power. Simple as that. Typical real time strategy thing. And then food. You can't build bases, houses, whatever, if they don't have enough food supply. So it's not like other RTSs where you might be lacking food. If you don't have the food to begin with, you can't build them to, to straight away. And then um, number of workers. We have five workers available. And the more houses you build, more workers become available. And your current population is zero. So your five workers right now, you have four rangers, one soldier, and that's it. Now, things to look around on the map. All we can see here, we can see some wood. We need those for trees and for hunting food. We can see some stones, which we can uh, mine. And we have our rangers. So first things first, start the game. Send your one of your rangers to scope the map out. Just not too far in case of zombies, especially if you're going on a harder setting. But you want to just see like how much space you have to deal with. Is the terrain helping you? For example, here, like, is it protecting you? These sort of chokeholds areas are very easy to defend. You can build walls and you can defend them. Um, and then this um, is for oil but we'll come to, to that much much later um okay and then here is some iron deposits so things to consider and then again let's scope out here 
Now, I've, I've, I've set time to start just simply because if you don't, then simply your ranger won't move. It'll be paused in time. So this is what I first thing I recommend. Scope out the area, see what resources you have available. Now, you need water to do fishing to, as a way to get food. You can also eventually build uh, farms, which you want to keep on the green. So when you're building houses, I recommend you build the houses on the barren land. You see this sort of uh, broken, dried land because um, you'll need the grassland later. Okay, so first things first, click the home, the command center button. We want to build a house so we can get some workers, okay? So let's build, um, let's build two, okay? So let's start time. So we're building two tents. This will give us workers. Okay, so let's go back. And then resources. The resources uh, are what you need to gather food and wood and stone and stuff like that. So you can see here. Now, we need to gather wood. So to do that, a sawmill. And let's put that next to the trees. Now, if we pause time, if you take a look at the ground, you see this area? You can only build in this area. And you can only build certain structures, like these wood uh, sawmills. You can only build them next to trees, obviously. That's why they're green here, but they're not green anywhere else. So let's build that there. And in order to extend the area where you build, you go back, you go to Energia, and you need to build Tesla towers. And what this allows you to do, you can see, Building a Tesla tower expands the range at which you can build resources. So we're going to put one Tesla tower here. Now, you need to consider your money and your resources. Your command center is always generating more at a slow rate. You can increase the rate you gather by doing and making more gathering points. But you can't expand too widely because um, you need to defend from zombie invasions. So let's carry on. Now, um, tutorials don't tend to be as long as this for games, but it's just because simply there's a lot of things to consider for this game, and you have to really consider long term. Like, I won't be able to show you a finished map, for example, because it will take hours. But um, I just want to give you the basics. So we're building a sawmill and a Tesla tower right now. Then we're going to build a uh, fisherman's cottage right here for food. And then you can also build a hunter cottage, again, for food. And you can see the rating. Now, it's worth moving it around to see how much food you'll get from each point. So here, 14, 14, 15, 13, 15, and so on. So do consider where you place it. Obviously, it has to be green. So we'll put it there because it's 15. That's the highest we can get in this area. Okay. Next, so we have a sawmill, we have a fisherman's cottage, and we have a hunter cottage. Now, what you can do, you can set these to patrol in case there's zombies around. So left click it, one of these rangers. You can zoom in with your mouse at any time with scroll in and uh, scroll up and scroll out, scroll down. So to move, you, you left click to select it, to move you right click to get to the position. Now you want to set it to uh, patrol ideally. So there's a button here, patrol, and then you left click to select where to patrol to from where you started. So this is the start, because I moved it to here. I'm going to patrol there. And you can see it's patrolling back and forth. And I'll simply do this with each one as a good, uh, let's say, best practice. Because, fine, we're playing on the easiest setting right now, but this will matter later. Like, if you dis like start enjoying the game and you want to know how to set guys to patrol. Okay? And typically... Four rangers together will be able to one-shot a single zombie. Okay. And it might sound great to do that, but do you initially, you might literally... It, it might sound great at the beginning to have four rangers like working together and stuff, but le later on, you will see, you'll get invasions of dozens and dozens of zombies. So you have to defend against that. Okay, now next. Uh, again, let's build a couple more uh, tents. Now, the good thing is, these can all be upgraded. So don't worry about placing tents whatever down, because eventually you can upgrade the tents to stone houses and uh, wooden, or sorry, wooden houses and stone houses and so on. You won't have to replace them. So wherever you place them, consider that for the long-term future. Now, okay, so we put some 
more tents down, we can get more residents. So you can see now we have 28 colonists and so on. We have plenty of power available going forward. Now, um, industry, uh, wood workshop. What the wood workshop allows you to do is to research better and bigger structures. So let me place one there, okay? And this will research uh, for us so we can upgrade these buildings. But we're not going to be too focused on that for now because it'll take a while to do that. Next, defense. You can build up wooden towers. So for example, sorry, wooden walls. Let, let's say I don't want to patrol this many places. It's just too many to think about at the same time. Okay, then I need to consider where to build some walls. So I can't build walls wherever I like without having the Tesla towers within range. So let's build one more Tesla tower right here. And then we are going to, when it's finished building, we're going to build a wooden wall right there. Just so that this guy, I mean, we can set them to patrol anywhere, to be, to be perfectly honest. So right there. Now, what you can do as well, you can select groups of NPCs and assign them hotkeys, which you can see right here. So to send them to different groups, you press control and then the corresponding number. So I've selected these two. You left click and drag to select them. Then control one, which means these two are now my number one. And then I'll set uh, these two to be my number two. So two and one. So you can see two, one, it's going to be really important to assign teams like this in the future because you're going to need to know or quickly be able to get to different sides of the bases with different teams without having to look for your people. And then we could just assign this as uh, number three for now. So it's a good idea to take advantage of this. Okay, now going forward, um, we are now, we've now built um, the structure, the wooden product, the wood workshop. Now, this will allow us to build better homes, for example, or, I recommend, farms. So, research a farm. What this will do, it will take time, but it will research and then give us the option to build a farm, which we're going to build on this greenery. And I'll show you why in a bit. Now, the next thing to do, while that's going ahead, we are going to build a quarry, but we don't have enough people. Okay, so because we don't have enough people, um, it means whenever you see that message of simply you don't have enough people, then you need to build more homes. Simple as that. Get more people in and so on. Now, later on, you might have an issue where you need to get more energy to get more people, but you need more people to build mills. So you're going to have to balance it out and make sure you have excess at least a little bit in certain stats before you go forward, especially pa like power. It might help you later. And it's a good idea to, to always have control of food. So, okay. So now we have extra people. Okay, so now we, we've reached a certain size. We can elect a mayor. So, um, now read these supplies. Worker supply plus 12. That's kind of a lot. And wood resources plus 30. I don't think that matters too much because we have a sawmill. So I'm going to choose this mayor. So there we go. We have more workers uh, supply which will be useful to us. Now, this uh, farm is nearly finished. So just a little bit more to get there. And complete. So we can now make farms. So go back to resources, farm. Now, you can see here, if you try and build on barren land, you'll get zero food. If I build a farm here, I'll get nothing. And here, I'd only get four. But here, I'll get as much as 64 food because it's all green land so you you want to build the farms on green land so there you go done next um i want to build that wall so i said go here to defense go to wall now one thing i recommend as well is actually build gates because otherwise um your characters might have a weird time like pathing around the zone so build a gate and then uh, build some walls. To build walls quickly, you click and then you can just drag it along. You don't have to manually click it. And what I seriously recommend, which you'll see in, in the future when you start getting zombie invasions, is double up. So um, when you get more wood resources, which you can see right there, add a second layer, add a third layer. Because um, when the zombie hordes attack, 
you're going to be very happy you did, that's for sure. Even add a second gate if you want. So another one there, and then more here, and so on. So start building the fences. What you can also do is you can build uh, towers, which you can put uh, snipers or archers in, or the rangers, because the rangers have bows. So again, good idea when zombies start attacking. Now, um, it might seem like we have loads of time. So it's only day six out of 150. But like I said, by 150, you're going to be invaded by hundreds of zombies. So you really have to consider that. Now, next, we're going to go to cottages. So 350. So it's going to research cottages. And we'll be able to upgrade these houses to be cottages. And next, we want to build a uh, quarry. So what do we need? We need energy and we need wood. Okay, so in order to get um, energy, we need to build a mill. Okay, so let's build a mill. We can place it right there, for example. It will build and it will pr provide us with energy. These eventually can be upgraded to advanced mills to do more energy. And you can also get power plants. So other things to consider in the future. But as you can see, it didn't allow me to build the quarry because I didn't have the power necessary to do it. And I have to wait for the wood to recharge. So I have to wait for the sawmill to provide the wood I need. There's nothing you can do to speed this up. So it's not like kingdoms and castles where you can chop down trees willy nilly. Like if you want more, you simply have to build more sawmills if you want it to come in quicker. So for example, I could build another sawmill. Let's build one right there. Okay, that'll give me another six wood per tick, which will be very useful, which means I can build structures quicker, the wood will fill up quicker. Now, at the beginning of the game, you have a very limited amount of how much of each resource you can hold. So the resources in the game, oil, iron, stone, wood, and gold. Later on, you can start building warehouses, which increase your capacity. So you want to uh, build those as soon as you can, essentially. Now... We've now um, got the ability to make cottages. So what you can do, you can select the tents and you can upgrade to a cottage. To do that, it says we need 90 gold, 12 wood, 2 energy and 4 foods. Okay, so let's um, upgrade. Now, what you can do, if you want to select all of them without like having to do anything else, just double click one of them and it will select all of the same type. So there you go. It selected all eight. If I want to upgrade all eight, then you could click this button and will upgrade all eight of them that it can afford to cottages. We don't have enough wood, so when the wood recharges, then this will light up again and we can build another one to a cottage. So you see, upgrade. So once they're upgraded, then they'll have more residents and so on. And you can do this one more time when you get the stone production and you want to, you can then make these into stone houses. Okay. So, so far so good, right? We, we seem to be okay. But you have to be really, really wary of your defenses. So, look. So, for example, I can build here a... I can build a couple of towers. So, let me build... Let me build uh, two. Okay? So, two towers. What you can do with the towers, you can put archers in them, which is helpful. Or what I really recommend later on is getting um, snipers. So you can select the wood production uh, workshop and you can research snipers. So see, it's now researching them. But in order to train snipers, you need to build a command center. To do that, we need 20 stone and yeah, so we're missing 20 stone. To get stones, we need to build a quarry. And again, we're short on wood. So, but we're about to get 30 wood if you look at the bottom right of the screen. So let's take a look. Now, something to consider, let me quickly move my camera, is um, right here, the bottom the bottom left, you should really consider the screen, this mini-map, because this will give you a clue about where the zombies are. So we can see some red uh, right there, which means there's zombie. There's a zombie right there. There's a couple of zombies e even moving in. So uh, we're going to set our people All right. there, just in case the zombies come any closer to defend our people, because... They can easily take us out. So keep an eye on the mini-map if any zombies try to sneak in early. Okay, now like I said, we're in it for the long term. So we really have to get our defenses up ASAP. So we still need our stone. 
So let us uh, now we can make a quarry. So you can see here we can get two stone here or three or six or sorry five. So make sure you put it in a point where you get the biggest amount. So here we go five. It will build a quarry which will give us five stones a tick. So why not? And like I said you have to really make sure that you um, we could probably build another farm here, but 26, that, that's a problem because there's only so much green land here. So let's do another farm here. This will give us 28 food. It's just because while we're upgrading everything, we want to make sure we have enough food. Simple as that. Now, again, to upgrade the houses, we need plenty of wood. So wood is coming in, so we can now upgrade this house. Attention. And I would recommend upgrading these houses as you go along rather than building dozens and dozens of tents because uh, space will be tight later on, that's for sure, the more you expand. Okay, now um, we want to build a command center. So when we have 20 stones and 20 wood, then we'll build this com uh, soldier center. So let's just keep an eye out on where we are. So the stones will start coming in in a second. So you'll see here, we've got five stone. So when we have 20, we'll build the command center and we can start training up military personnel. Now, um, before this resource gets full, before any of them get full, recommend you spend it. So let's upgrade another house. Remember to upgrade them all, just double click whichever type and then just click the button and it will upgrade as many as it can afford to upgrade. So I can't afford to upgrade this one. So in order to upgrade, now it can. Okay, so now we've upgraded all of our tents, or it's in the process of upgrading all of our tents to cottages, which is great. Next, uh, let's do research for another thing. So now we can get a great ballista. These are really good, these ballistas. So I highly recommend that you research those quickly. What they are simply, they are automated archer towers, which will just fire massive arrows at the zombies and pretty much one shot them one um, zombie at a time and they also can be upgraded later on in the game so it is a point to really consider your resources as you go along now um, looking forward how many workers do we have spare okay workers we have 21 available workers so that's not a problem for now we have plenty so we don't need to build more houses yet now we want to get more uh we have plenty of food as well 69 available food so we have loads of food so we're in a good place wood is capped so that's good and then stone is coming in at a decent pace but we could, we could probably get more so let's build um another okay we don't need to build a tesla tower here thankfully because we're already within that range so let's build a tesla tower here to expand this way and let's build another mill or another quarry right here so uh quarry let's see four is for the maximum yes four is the maximum so let's build it here okay so we can now make great ballistas so let me show you that go to uh military now to make a great ballista we need more energy so you see so let's go back and let's make another mill so where should we put the mill? We can put the mill anywhere that is available. Um, okay, let's put another mill because we're running out of power. These can eventually be upgraded to be um, advanced mills and they generate more power each. Now, um, the next thing we could build is the stone quarry if we want. So let's research the stone workshop, which will allow us to build stone structures. Now, the market is also very useful. So it says here, can buy or sell resources, automatically sells excess resources produced, reduce food needs of surrounding dwellings, defense barriers, and so on. So let's let's make a market now. We'll try and put the market there so it affects all the houses, which will be really useful. Now, it will take a while to do that. So go back, command center. Um, let's see, can we, should we build some other defense here maybe to try and funnel the zombies around now one thing we find is in this game is that if the zombies attack from this way and there's a wall here they're not going to automatically run around and attack from another angle they're just going to keep smashing their way through the zombies are mindless so uh, you will have to not only defend but put archers in the towers 
Now, one thing I really recommend is put snipers in the towers or build great ballistas. So let me show you how powerful the great ballista is. So uh, let's put one uh, here. So you can see the range of the great ballista. In fact, let's put it there so it covers more of the... Uh, let's put it there. So if any zombie is within that range, it will automatically fire a big arrow at them. Okay. Next, uh, soldier center. This is really useful because this is what we need to use to train soldiers or snipers or whatever. So let's make one now. Okay. Now, we've already researched snipers, thankfully. That's already an option to us with the gold we've generated. Now, in order to increase gold income, you can actually, as I said, build the market so excess resources are sold. Or you can actually find gold, like just dotted around the map, but we'll worry about that another time. Or if you destroy enemy bases and so on, because there is actually towns controlled by the zombies um, in this game. Now, we're on day 13. We really have to consider our future. You know, okay, so next. Stone workshop. Let's get it done. Okay, so it's still building the soldier center. So that's nearly done. Next. What can we build? What do we need? So, workers. We have two available workers, so it might be worth seeing if we can build some more cottages. So when we have 120, um, we're going to build another cottage so we have more workers. Because look, we can't make... Um, now, oh, okay, now we also need iron. So by hovering over, when something is greyed out, you obviously can't make it, but it will tell you what you need. So we need money, which is always coming in, but we also need iron. So let's see if we can find an iron deposit. There's one right there. So we have to build a quarry on the iron. Now, if you put the quarry between two resources, like we see here, stone and iron, it will it will mine both, which is really useful. So, But here, again, we're still short on workers. So this can be a problem later on. So let's build two more cottages. And I would recommend building the best house available to you straight away rather than building a cheap house and upgrading. Um, just because it'll be useful. Like, and I am intending to upgrade all of these houses to be stone houses when I have the option to do it. Okay, so we're nearly done with this um, basic tutorial. I just want to um, let you understand the really how to get things started and what to consider for the future. Now, the houses are nearly done. Okay, now we, we still need the iron, so let us build and get a, another quarry. We could place it here, we see that will give us four stone and two iron, but we're not within range of a, of a Tesla tower. So again, Tesla tower, and then we can increase the range of the, the base. So once that's uh, built, we can do a quarry right there to start getting iron. Now, these maps are RNG. So sometimes they'll be placed in a really good way. They'll really defend you. They'll give you lots of resources and so on. Other times it will be a hindrance to you. So And there's not really anything you can do about that. But keep an eye on the minimap at all times. Um, like on the bottom left of the screen to make sure that everything is good. Now, um, let's go back and let's see if we can make the quarry. So let's put that there. So you see here. Oh. Okay, so look, we can get free iron or four stone. So do, like I said, do get in the habit of moving it around to make sure you get the most bang for your buck. Okay, so we're building one here to get iron and so on. So, okay, so the stone workshop finished. Okay, so let's do a lookout tower next and then we can finish off with a snake trap. Now you can never demolish these uh, buildings, the workshops, because you might think, you know, oh, well, I finished with the wood workshop. Why not just demolish it but put a stone one in its place? There isn't an option to demolish it. Simple as that. So once you've built it, it's there for life. And But it's a good idea to start the research as quickly as you can. Now, we can see I'm, I'm capped out on my stone now um, and my wood. So what you can do, you can build, like I said, warehouses. But again, we need more workers. So we're always short on workers, which is really irritating. So let's build some more cottages. Let's build one here, one here, then one there, one there, and so on. So we have four more cottages on the way so we can get enough workers and we can build a warehouse. And then that will increase the maximum capacity of resources we can hold. Now, I am very wary of the fact that I don't have any defense here. 
this whole section. Now, you should be careful with this because it literally takes, it can take one zombie to convert your entire base. So you really have to be careful with that. Let's put that soldier here. Okay, and if, if anything as well, um, okay, so all the cottages are completed. We have enough workers, we have enough resources, but we need gold. So once we have 300 gold, we'll get our first sniper. Now, snipers can kill one zombie per shot. One, they one-shot zombies of a certain type. Later on in the game, you might see more powerful zombies, but most of the time at the beginning, you'll only see the zombies that they can one-shot. So let's build a sniper now. So to, to build a sniper, you simply select the command center, see what's available. So you see right now we have sniper, soldier, and ranger. We learned sniper because it was available to us from the wood workshop. But sometimes mayors can be elected, which also give you the option to have a sniper if you're lucky. Okay, and then last but not least, snake trap. And that will be all the resources. Okay, so now we have a sniper right there. To assign him to a tower, you simply left click him and then right click the tower when there's that symbol. He'll run over to the tower. You'll see he's on the tower now and so any zombie that comes within range of the tower he will just one tap. So and you can have more than one sniper per tower. Okay so I'm fairly happy about this half of the map but I am a bit concerned about here and here. So um, I need to increase my defense and here as well, to be honest. I've got many choke points. But at the, same, at the same time, I don't want to become too claustrophobic because um, I do need to expand. If I want to get enough resources to defend against the final attack, then um, I will need the space to do it. Now, let us build the stone uh, workshop. So industry and trade. Stone workshop, I need 20 energy and 1,000 gold. So let's build... Okay, zombies, where are they? Okay, oh crap, so you see? Now, because the zombies are already overtaking the base and they're destroying all the buildings and I didn't have defense, I said I was concerned about defense here and here, each time the zombies destroy a house, they multiply and um, you can see it's already got out of hand and sorry to say, I've lost. And this will happen to you a lot. Once the middle base is destroyed game over so because i was concerned about the east and the south and i did nothing about it i lost the game simple as that so you really have to make sure that you um really consider all your defenses and so on later on when you get more resources and you're sort of secure in your base and so on then it is um you'll it'll be easier for you to deflect masses of these zombies but that was only a couple of zombies later on you'll have dozens then hundreds so you really have to consider it and i think that was actually a perfect way to end this tutorial video you will die a lot of times you do need to um like practice and go forward but i hope i've showed you the basics of how this game works things to consider things to think about and so on so Anyway, guys, if you liked the video, remember to give it a uh, thumbs up and also a subscribe. I'll make more guides as I go along. I'll try and make more guides and more tutorials on my channel because I think that's what people like the most. Anyway, guys, um, if I do find more advanced techniques later on for more harder difficulty settings, um, then I will p consider doing that. Let me know if you played this game, if you what you think of it and so on. Do you like real-time strategy games? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, that's it. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye.